Hey guys, this is DJ Foxy Lady from KUCI 88.9 FM, Irvine. And I'm here at Tropicalia in Long Beach, California. And I'm here with two members of Chicano Batman. Can you guys please introduce yourselves? Uh, my name is Carlos Revelo. I play guitar. My name is Bardo Martinez. I sing. Um, so guys, it's a great pleasure to meet you. Um, how does it feel to be headlining this music festival that really just like focuses on Latin music? Um, it's an honor. It's a great lineup. It's like uh, they, it's like they took a playlist of stuff that we used to listen to or still listen to growing up. You know, you have oldies music like Brenton Wood, you got Tropicalia like Os Mutantes, and then you have um, what else? I don't know. I wish I was just attending this concert instead of playing it because <laughs> I can't. I can't it, see everything. I can't go yeah. see Brenton Wood because it's on the other side of the whole complex. So, uh, but yeah, it's it's a, it's really an honor. Yeah, definitely. Um, I wanted to know, how did you two meet each other? Uh, Bardo used to date the singer of my band when I was like 20. Oh, interesting. And that's how we first met. That was a long, that was 13 years ago. And um, we stayed in touch, you know, after that relationship had run its course. And uh, he was a dope musician, and he liked my guitar playing. And we talked about collaborating on music at some point, but we lived really far from each other. He was going to UCLA. Okay. And um, all the way on the west side, and I lived in the Inland Empire, and it just was like too far. But eventually, I moved closer, and I don't know the timing was just right. He just hit me up one day, and he was like, "I would like to bring you aboard so we can, you know, make different kind of songs, I guess." And yeah. And how long have you guys been working together as a band? So the band's been together for nine years, and I've been in the band for uh, seven years. Okay. Yeah. Um, is it shocking to be like where you're at right now? Or no? A little bit, I would say. Uh, kind of, I mean, we're here in L.A. This is like our, kind of like the epicenter of our crowd. And so uh, you walk around and it's like, we, we, there's kind of like, a, you know, there are a lot of the bands that are playing are our friends. Yeah. Like Buye Pongo, like The Commons, like Las Cafeteras. They're our friends. Mm -hmm. Like we know each other for years. So it's just like they're playing. And so it's just like, uh, I don't know. It's kind of like... Um, serendipitous in a way where just like everybody we know is doing well and then you know and then we're kind of like in a sense uh doing very well in that scene as well obviously because we're we're closing it yeah. so it's uh people show you a lot of respect which feels good mm -hmm. yeah people ask us a lot like oh, how do you feel how do you feel you guys feel different you know since we've had some relatively modest success from you know the earlier days and i just tell them the only difference is we're playing a bigger crowds and there's probably better sound you know yeah. I still feel like the same person. Yeah, you know? of course. We're still yeah. humble and ourselves. I don't know. Mm -hmm. No, no. But I mean, like, you've seen some people where the ego goes to their head, but, like, you guys are just, like, you know, real. Like, I hope so. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I really love uh, the Freedom is Free music music video, and I wanted to know, like, how who came up with the concept? Did you guys have to do a lot of retakes for that? It was a production company called Minnesota Films, and they're a Venezuelan um, production company. Okay. Or uh, they're Venezuelans that are that live in Mexico City now, mm -hmm. and they came up with the the concept. We got the treatment like in June. Our label put out like a submission for um, treatments for the for the song, and they sent us two treatments. One was very like in your face, anti-Trump, which we thought was not subtle enough, mm -hmm. you know. And then um, the next one was this, the concept that you see in the video now. Um, and we kind of sat on it for a while. We weren't sure if we wanted to go with it because it was, it was pretty heavy in, and a departure from a lot of the stuff we did. But after talking to Bardo and, you know, talking it over, he was like, you know, we got to do this. This is something different. You know, it's just going to, it's just going to, it's important for the message of the song. And yeah, we went with it. And just to let people know it. We're getting dunked in a, uh, a water barrel, not a toilet. <laughs> you want to add anything? Um, I mean, I guess for I, I just want to say that I mean we're we're pretty proud of the the video because uh, I mean it's important for artists to put out something that's strong. I feel like uh, at least I mean obviously many artists do so put out like image you know they're able to brand themselves well because they have something that's very clear and uh, distinguishable. So uh, I'm glad we were able to do that. And I think we did it with this video. Yeah, you did. And it, to me, like, it was heavy, but at the same time, like, with your music, how, like, beautiful and positive it is at the same time, it was, like, a good balance. Like, 
it didn't come off like too too heavy or too harsh so like, lighthearted. yeah exactly yeah. and especially like seeing i thought it was so much more like emotional and passionate you know like doing that like you know the, the whole concept it was very physical yes we exactly like, we got, like me busted i got like all kinds of scars and i'll show you you can zoom in it's a nice little okay. for the rest of my life i'm gonna have well, that's I'm gonna actually have, pretty serious i'm gonna have this, this scar. it just it, it just so barely cool. stopped hurting like last last month Oh. Basically, the the shot um, there was like um, these fr there was these frames holding up the um, the barrel of water, and so that they could hoist the camera underneath. And the, there was like you know glass, and the way they created the frames, we had to be like we had to put our legs in between it to get the shot. And what was holding the frames together were these bolts, and they had these huge steel bolts. And I remember just thinking. Okay, Carlos, make sure you don't hit your, like, shin on those bolts, you know? Before. Literally the second take, I, like, you know, you're acting and you're trying to make it look realistic. You're trying to struggle. I, like, kicked my leg out and I just hit the bolt right on my shin. It was just bleeding, like, the whole the whole take. And it was, like, a, what, 12-hour day? It was a 12-hour day. I mean, I remember just, like, going home and knocking out because it was so physical. First of all, not only are you worried about your legs, but you're worried about hitting your head on this barrel because they're actually trying to dunk us in the water. I was the first one to, to get dunked, and I was, like, the most unprofessional about it. It was, like, it was so difficult. Like, my immediate reflex reflex was to just bust out, like, just because somebody's, I was, like, so we had to change some tactics, like, don't push my head down, please, <laughs> because, uh, you know, like, I'm going to react. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, they it, they it, it, like, like, like you're, you're messing up my, my body. My so body. it was, like, very real. Yeah. Anyways, what you're seeing is pretty much what we did. Yeah, we, we flew in. So we had a, a two-week run in the Northeast flying out on tour. And then from Boston, we flew out on a Sunday night to Mexico City to film the, the video. And we shot it in one day and then flew home. Yeah. Did you guys have to do a lot of retakes on that? Or 12-hour days? Was it just like constantly? Yeah, it was constant. No uh, way. Yeah, it was just it was one shot. What you're seeing is two shots, actually. Yeah. So we in order to get that shot, we, we practiced it like probably like 30, 40 times. Yeah, that's, that's crazy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, you see it, and then like I, I mean, I had that idea. It was like, how many times do you have to do this? Because it's so good, but it's like it's not like that right away. But yeah, it's not like they, it's not like they piece the takes together. Yeah, 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 yeah. But no, it was, it was a great music video. It was powerful, and I, I, I loved it. It was very expressive. Thank you. Yeah, um, I wanted to ask, um, is there anybody out there that you guys would ever like to collaborate with? Uh, this is a lot, probably. A lot. <laughs> I always say Solange. She's she's amazing. I mean, we got Cafe Tacuba outside, yeah. like mm -hmm. hanging out yeah, right there. Santana expressed some interest in collaborating with us. You know, really? whether that you know comes to fruition, you know, will remain re will remain to be seen. But um, you know, he threw it out there, and just the gesture is just extremely humbling. Yeah. You know, we have a lot of respect for him. Both of us as guitar players, so inspired by his his music, yeah. you know, especially his '60s records. Those were just like timeless classics. No, he's a total influence. How was it to like meet him and open up for him? It was it's such a crazy honor. We were, I think, we were in Minneapolis. We had just landed, and we got a call from our our uh, our manager, and he was like, um, "Carlos Santana wants you guys to open for him at the House of Blues." And you know he's a fan like he reached out like his team reached out directly specifically for you guys mm -hmm. like not just like hey find a band to open it was yeah, like no yeah, we want yeah. chicano batman and we got there and he came into our green room and he was like i want to i want you guys to come to my green room and so we went to his green room and then he just told us how much he appreciated what we were doing and then he shared some music that he was into that he's listening to right now and he played us a bunch of african music that I guess is going to be like the template for his next record where he's going to just cover like a lot of his favorite African um, songs. A lot of times you, you don't know when uh, or how you get booked for something. This is different. Like, you know, it could be a booking agent. It could be whoever. Uh, he told us that it was like, oh, I booked you guys because I like, you know, I like what you guys are doing, etc. Yeah, he booked us. Yeah. It was crazy. Yeah. And actually, um, not only he... I mean, obviously, the, he expressed that, but also his uh, tour manager expressed that. It's like, well, you're here because he brought you, mm -hmm. not me. Yeah, so it was dope. It was, it was a trip. It was just like, you know, we're in a room this size, and he's playing this music, and he has his vintage Fender Strat in the corner and his amp for warming up, and it was just very surreal. It was just like, 
It was amazing. Yeah, we're in front of a legend. Exactly. Right, right there. Yeah. Um, I so we have a radio show um, out of Irvine, KCI eight point nine FM, and I always ask like if you can request a song on the radio, what would it be? If I could request a song, mm, does that have to be modern or anything? Anything you want. Man. Yeah, I know. Hey, this one takes a while. <laughs> it's the hardest. What would I request? Oof. Um, what would you request? I think uh, Angel Baby, uh, but Rosalie and the Originals. This is for you, love. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh what? Do, I'd probably request some weird stuff like um, Witch. There's this uh, Zambian psychedelic rock group called Witch um, came out like in the early 70s and they're doing a bunch of reissues on them through uh, Now Again Records um, Egon and um, I'd probably pick one of those songs I like them like garage rock with fuzz guitars yeah yeah Uh, I've actually heard of Witch before when I heard it I was like this is so good it's so good uh, Bardo, I just like to say I love how much you talk about like your family and your daughter is adorable. Like I just want to like Thank throw you. that out Appreciate there. Yeah, um, and I listen to your guys like NPR guest DJ, and I have to say I fell in love with it. Like that music you shared, it was like I want you guys to be a guest DJ on my show, <laughs> just so you can just like share more like gems or like you know this like amazing music that we yeah, don't know okay. about. Yeah, no, Thank no, you. it was so so good. Like. Yeah, I did a lot of research. <laughs> yeah, we'll show her, like, I'll show my sister, and she'll be like, uh, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, no, yeah. And that's, I just wanted to say, like, you know, like, thank you just for, like, creating this music right now and being a voice, right, like, during this time and generation. Like, it's a lot, especially for, like, our ethnicity and everything. Like, you're like the bridge we needed from, you know, American culture and then. Yeah. You know, you grew up in Los Demonarios, Los Spooky, yeah. and then you have, like, um, the Eagles and stuff like that. So it's like a bridge. It's a favorite band. You know, it's, it's <laughs> definitely a bridge that we need, and this festival reflects that. It does. It's, um, it really does. Thank you so much for saying that. Um, yeah, um, like we said earlier, it's like, it's like they took our, you know, our playlist of our lives and threw it onto a festival today. It was, you know, I resonates. And then what it what it really means is like, that's just the the cultural reality of a lot of people like us. You know, we're all like you said, we grew up listening to all that music in our house, and there's finally like someone curating it at a at a major festival, and so other people can enjoy that maybe didn't grow up in a you know a bicultural household. You know, I think that um, you know. Nowadays, uh, I mean, what's a new generation that we have outside there? You know, it's not it's not our generation. You know, we're on our thirties now. These are kids that are like they're out there. I'm I'm about to be thirty. Okay, (laughs) sure, you're definitely out there, but you are not the majority out there. The majority out there was born in '98, from '95 through like 2003. You know what I'm saying? These kids are young. And I think uh, a lot of times it takes generations for people to figure out. I basically like to analyze the past and to get into, to how can I put it, to absorb the music that's been happening. You know, so like whatever we've been into, whatever, maybe it wasn't cool in our day, it's cool now. You know what I'm saying? They're absorbing some of these things that they may have never heard or have some type of reference to. But, but now it's like since we're expressing it, they, they latch onto it. And it's like... It takes generations. It always takes generations for that to happen. Sorry, it's my phone. Oh, no worries. They're not rejecting the raíces. You know, they're actually, like you say, they're observing it. Yeah. And when we grew up, we were confused, like, can we embrace it or not? Mm-hmm. Sure, exactly. And now it takes it's time. Like, yes, yes. It wasn't cool in our time. Yes. And it's like the, the internet and all that provides, like, a bigger platform for and I think more than now, like, people are able to be, like, an artist, especially with platforms like SoundCloud, you know, like, where you can put out your music and not going through the industry where it's even, like, more restricted. And more filtered. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, sorry, um, have you guys, like, ever been, um, or I always like to ask, uh, can you guys say some, like, random facts about each other or yourself? Whatever's easier. 
Um, I have a master's degree in urban planning. Uh, I'm a Virgo. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a Pisces. That's good, though. Yeah, 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 you're good, you're good. Um, I want to ask, uh, are you guys, like, spiritual in any sense? Like, you have, you say a lot that you want, like, to just, like, people to connect, like, to the universe, you know, and, like, live life. Um, I can't help but, like, get that, that sense from you. I mean, I don't uh, subscribe to any religion, but, um, you know, I would say, yeah, you know, I'm spiritual in the sense that I, I think of everything in terms of, like, a holistic view, like you said, like the universe, nature. Um, I think those are things that people need to pay attention to, you know? Yeah, that's, that's it. I mean, it's <laughs> it's all around us all the time. Yeah. You know, and it's, uh, I don't know, maybe it's a little self-righteous to spew it out there so much, but... You know, because it's difficult. I mean, it's I mean, it's not difficult. What I'm trying to say is like, the present moment is for you to dig into. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, I need to do that. Not like all the time. Like we all need to do that. But I guess uh, by putting out there, put that message out there by by saying those things. Um, I don't know. Maybe we can start understanding that 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 may be something good for us. You know, yeah. uh, the simple act of being kind, for example. You know. Um, you said that like Chicano Batman is an agent of change and I just wanted to know like what would you want to change? Uh, man, there's a lot of divisiveness, you know, in this time. I think with the internet people can get away with like being like nastier than they probably would be to people and if they had to talk to them in person, you know, that an anonymity. So um, yeah, just make people just be more understanding and I don't know communicate and understand that things don't need to be broken down into political lines you know okay you you're a Republican he's a Democrat or you voted Trump or you voted Hillary like just because of that happened that doesn't mean you guys can't connect like as yeah. human or as people you know yeah. um, I think people need to get back to that and understand like those things don't define us you know like there's other things that we connect to like at a higher level mm -hmm. than politics you know no, I think I think the new generation is doing a good job of that. You know, you see more, you know, uh, interracial couple, couples to say it. I mean, race is just a concept, right? We're all we're all the same. I yeah. think uh, I think that's important that we deconstruct these notions. There's so many things that we abide by, so many ideas that we abide by that have nothing to do with us. Really, we're just born into this world, and our, you know, people that live before us have constructed these views that are totally dominating how we speak, how we relate to each other. So it's like, it's a matter of like getting rid of those, you know, walls and barriers, you know, as, as Carlos is saying, it's just, it's part of the same thing. Yeah. Um, and like I said, again, I just, I want to thank you for your music because it unifies people, you know, like it, it brings us together, especially with the same ideology. And yeah, it, it's, it's, it's so, it's so good. And it has a great message on top of it. And I, last question, um, what can we expect next from you guys? Well, we're taking a little break from touring so much, we toured a lot behind this uh, new record. We'll probably just be playing like festivals here and there next year, but hopefully start writing and making the next one, start getting those, getting those songs together. Yeah, definitely. Okay. All right. Well, thank you so much. It means a lot. Thank you. Yes.